you're looking at the AIT 5200 series fusing machine. Uh, this particular one is 40 inches wide, so we call it a 5240. Uh, but we make this same machine 54 inches wide and 63 inches wide, so that's the 52, 54, and 52, 63. <clears throat> Each of the machines uh, come with an input conveyor, so what you're looking at is the input sheet metal cover over the bottom belt that's extended here. The belt exposure is about two feet uh, for uh, loading ease for the operators. We've got a 60 inch long heat chamber there. It's top and bottom heat with uh, pneumatic pressure rolls uh, at the rear end of the heat chamber. Just a quick shot here. Here's the compressed air hookup for the machine. If the compressed air uh, goes away or is unhooked, then the machine alarms and cuts off. It uses the compressed air for belt tracking and, of course, for the pressure rollers as well. You're looking at the rear of the machine now. They come with a separately driven exit conveyor. Uh, this is a mesh belt that is driven at something like 1.25. It's about 20 to 25% faster than the machine itself is turning. Through the uh, uh, mesh belt, you can see a perforated metal screen. There's blower motors there that's going to pull ambient air through the product as it exits. This is the exit portion of the equipment um, where the two PTFE belts separate. You can see a drive roll here and the top pressure roller. Making our way around. Got some of the covers off on this side. So you see the lower section, there's going to be your main drive motor the, on the uh, left-hand side of the screen. And then also <coughs> contactors and a lot of the electrical componentry here that's used for uh, starting and, and, and maintaining the heating elements inside the machine. That we'll look closer at momentarily. Um, opposite of where the compressed air hookup is, <coughs> Here's where the main electrical comes into play. So, main electrical feed here. These machines are 220 volt three phase standard. And then now we're looking at the left hand side of the machine that we saw earlier. E stops all the way around. Then we've got a movable control panel here. This machine's in cool down, but you can see all the machines are in Celsius. Have your adjustment for the pressure roller forward heating and there's also uh, warning lights there's an audible warning too that comes on if this section lights up on the belt tracking and and indicates that there is a belt tracking problem top or, top or bottom left or right you can see you can turn the blower motor fans on or off and then the belt speed is in meters per minute so that's two linear meters per minute. Okay, so more about the 5200 series fusing machine. Uh, we're on the control panel side of the machine and this is the 5240 as I mentioned before. And now we're going to go through kind of a component by component part. We've got the side frame and covers off. So uh, let's start here. Uh, generally speaking, you can see these alternating angles, and what these are, these are heating elements. So these are top heating elements here, bottom here. So what we'll have is we'll have a Teflon bell top and bottom coming through here, and they will actually go through uh, in between the top and bottom heating element channels. These are the electrical wires that are feeding the elements in each channel. So that's going to continue all the way through the back of the machine. Um, in the meantime, here's something, uh, the next important component to know. This uh, cylinder is the top belt tracking cylinder. So if this machine was running uh, now and the belt came over close to us, 
you would see this arm extend and that's going to move a roller up and 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 cause the belt to come tracking back towards us so that's what this cylinder uh, is responsible for um, coming back through the machine here you can see top and bottom elements top and bottom here's a different wire this one's actually the thermocouple so we've got a thermocouple that is in the heating element itself both on the top and the bottom and um, that's what you're you're seeing with this wire here. As the top and bottom belt comes through, uh, here you can see a, a conglomeration of chains and sprockets. Basically what you have is a drive roller. If we looked at the rear of the machine, you would notice that this is silicone coated. Uh, but so are these two rollers. And these two rollers, this one on the top, this one on the bottom, are pressure rollers. So kind of zoom out a bit and see this other air cylinder here. This is your pressure control so you can add additional air or lower in order to push these two rollers together. So that's your pressure set at the end of the heat chamber that does that. Um, this uh, piece here is a, a wiper bar that's used to clean the bottom belt as it's uh, going through the machine. You can pull it all the way out, change this uh, terry cloth sock that's on it, and then put it back in in order to clean uh, the belt while you're running. Other elements here as we kind of go lower in the machine. Well, I take that back. Before we do, uh, let me point this out. These are tracking switches. Kind of hard to see but basically you've got a micro switch, two sets of them, one here and one here. The first set activates the belt. You recall that pressure cylinder that we spoke of momentarily that does the tracking. That switch activates the pressure, the uh, uh, tracking cylinder and roller. The second switch is a safety switch, so if the belt does track over too far, then it'll turn the machine off. You're going to see the same thing for the bottom belt. Hard to see in this little window, but that's the gist of it. And then if we go on down, main drive motor. So we got one motor in the equipment to drive the belt, uh, as you can see here. This is the motor drive control, Fuji brand. And then uh, you can see the um, kind of part of the electronic set here. Uh, all of these components are uh, uh, contactors, so you'll hear those going in and out as the machine and the temperature controller calls for more heat. Main breakers here, and then you have your main electrical feed and uh, entry into the equipment here up through the uh, main turnoff switch. So that's the right hand side of the machine from a component level. So again the 5200 series, this being the 5240 um, 40 inch wide machine, you're looking at the right hand uh, side of the machine when you're coming to the front of the machine. We've taken some panels off so we're going to continue that componentry level uh, discussion of what's inside the equipment. Uh, quick note here, on this front edge underneath the input conveyor is the, um, uh, is the input for the compressed air. <clears throat> the machine will come, there's a serial plate, but it'll also come with these oilers and a pressure gauge, etc. And the customer just needs to make their hookup at this position. It needs compressed air for the tracking system and also uh, for the pressure rollers inside the machine. And uh, in fact, um, on that subject, I'll just zoom into this panel down here. Down at the bottom, there's that component on your far left of the screen. That's charged with making sure that there's air pressure on the machine. If not, the machine will turn off and you'll ha hear a uh, audible alarm. Series of solenoids that are controlling the flow of the compressed air. 
looking at the heat chamber from the opposite side, so this is kind of a repeat story of what you saw on the uh, other side of the equipment. You don't see the electrical wires here because this is the other end of the heating element. Top left is the tracking cylinder for the top belt. Air cylinder that you see at the bottom of your screen is for the pressure roller. You can see now top and bottom elements going through the equipment and we get back to here where the pressure rollers are. So these uh, two panels come off the equipment and you have good quick access uh, to all the components on this uh, 5240 and this applies also to the whole 5200 series.